Hi and welcome to another episode of Peacemake TV. In this week's video tutorial we're going to go over to Photoshop and we're going to take a look at how we can create this matte effect that's very popular in photography right now. You're going to see this all over the place where people are using this on Instagram, they're using it on stock photography sites and so many other locations. And I'm going to show you one method of creating this effect quickly and easily in Photoshop. Now we've covered this in Lightroom and I'll link that in the description and also up in the top corner now. So if you'd like to check it out, how to do this exact same effect in Lightroom, that's linked there for you to check it out. But let's take a look at this in Photoshop and let's crack on with how we do everything step by step. And one of the most important things when you're working with images in Photoshop is to ensure that you work non-destructively. And that gives you the best method of being able to make changes and come back and tweak and edit without affecting the underlying image. So, with that in mind, we're going to work on this image and we're going to use adjustment layers for almost everything. So, let's start off by dealing with the levels and how we can crush the blacks in this. So to do that, we're going to come into the curve section. So what we're going to do is come down to the bottom, we're going to click and we're going to choose the Le uh, curves adjustment. From there you can see that brings the curves panel up. Now we're working in RGB but if you're working in CMYK it's all going to work the same you're just working with the different color ranges so we're going to affect the tonal information so the colors are not going to be affected at this point. So if we take a look at the histogram you can see this shows us a diagonal line top right hand corner is the highlights in the image bottom left hand corner is the black point in the image. So what we can do is we can add a few points to this and then we can start to influence how those different tonal information is displayed inside the image itself. So let's add a couple of points in there. And the reason I'm going to do this is because I want to ensure that only the points that I want to edit are going to be influenced. If we leave this with no points on then we start manipulating the bottom section for the blacks. We'll find we'll start to create more of a curve that will then influence the midtones and the highlights, which we don't want to do. So by doing this, we're basically pinning this information into place, holding those with minimal alterations when we start to make changes to the curve. So if we come down to the bottom left hand corner, if I start to if I grab this point and start to lift it up, if you look at the black in the image, you can see it starts to flatten out and the blacks now become more grey. So you can see this is probably a little too far, but it gives you a good indication of what's going on. So if we undo that by just turning this on and off, you can see there's our starting point. There's our edit image with those blacks being crushed. Now that's probably a little too far, so I'm just going to come back in and drag those back down a little bit. So we're controlling exactly what's going to be affected. And you can see, because we've done this, we pinned those points down. They're not really being affected, so we are only influencing the bottom portion, the dark shadow area inside the information in the image. Now, we can go one step further if we want to make sure that we protect the midtones and the highlights in the image. We can come down onto our layer, double click, and that will open up the layer styles option. And what we can do in this is, by making sure the blending options are selected, we can now control how those different shades are being affected inside the image. We can protect the things we don't want to alter. So if we see underlying layer and blend if, if we start to drag this point, the light point on the right hand side over, we're basically saying we don't want anything that goes above this point to be affected by the changes we're making. So if I drag this over, if you take a look at the skin tones and the shadows in the Im image, you'll see as we get to a certain point, we'll start to see some kind of weird effect going on. And what we're effectively doing is saying that anything that goes above this point, don't affect it. Make no changes to that information. So we're protecting those mid-tones and those highlights. And the skin tones are really being noticed to be affected by pulling this back over. Now what we can do is we can hold the Alt or the Option key down and we can split this and what that allows us to do is feather the effect in between where we're protecting it and the point we say right, it goes no further than this. So this area in between these two points is being feathered or smoothed out so we get a nice transition between that shade information. So there we go. So let's just click OK to that. So now we find that the skin tones and the mid tones and the highlights are having next to no effect from this alteration. So if we uncheck, you can see the skin tones don't change, just the shadow information changes. So there's our first point. So let's move on now and we can start to make some color alterations to the shadows and the highlights in the image. 
Now, if we wanted to, we could quite easily leave the effect where it is right now. And we've got a pretty cool matte effect, very quick and easy. But let's just say we want to change the way that you perceive the image. Now, you may want to sort of take this and cool it down a little bit so we can add some color to the shadow, some cooler tones to that. Or you may want to warm things up and we can do the reverse. We can add some warmer tones to the shadows. So there's a couple of different ways you can do this. We could, if we wanted to, start going in and adjusting the color channels inside the curves. Or we can go in and we can add some color balance to the image itself. So let's take a look at both methods. Let's start off, first of all, with the color balance. So same again, we're going to come down, we're going to add a new adjustment layer, give it a click, and we're going to come down and choose color balance. That now gives us the ability to influence the midtones, the shadows, and the highlights independently, and we can target the color information in there, and we can change and influence that. So what we can take a look at is you can see at the moment we're working in the midtones. We can just choose to go into the shadows and we can now start to manipulate these three different sliders and take them towards the cyan red, magenta green, yellow or blue areas. So let's say we want to add some cooler color to the shadows. We can simply come down to the yellow blue slider and move that over to the right hand side. And you can see once we do that, all the shadows start to really cool down. So let's take a look. There's before there's after so we've taken that natural sort of yellow tone and we've influenced it with blue very quick and easy if we wanted to do the opposite we want to warm things up let's put that back to its its zero point and we could if we wanted to start to influence those add a little bit of red in there you can see that now gives a sort of warm orangey tone maybe bring a little yellow into it and we kind of get that really nice retro effect so let's just take a look at before and after. So you can see the skin tones get warmed up, the shadows warm up. Now let's just say we don't want to influence those skin tones. Well, we can do the same as we did last time. We can come in and we can adjust the blending. So we double click on this layer. You can see the blend options come up again and we can do exactly the same thing. So let's just drag this over and you'll see the same effect over the skin. We'll start to drag that over and say we only want to affect the shadows. So if I bring this over, take a look at this area and you'll see as I bring this over, you'll see how the effect is being completely removed from that area which is falling outside the area of influence. So we'll bring that back in a little bit because I want to affect that, but I don't want the skin tones to be affected. So that's looking pretty good. Again, I'll do the same thing, Alt or Option, to smooth that down, to feather those ed edge transitions, and we'll say OK. So there's before. And there's after and you can see now even though your eye might perceive there's a slight difference to the skin tones that's basically because we're changing the background so there's before there's after a really nice effect but let's go back and take that and take a look at a different way of doing this so let's just get rid of that so delete that off there delete the color balance off there okay so we're back to our starting point now where we've just influenced the tonal information in the image now let's come up to the Curves adjustment again. And what we can do is now we can start going in and adjusting the color information. Now, if you wanted to, you can work on your tonal curve, or you could easily come in and just add another one. So we come back up, we'll say we put another curves adjustment layer in there, and this one now is just going to be used for the color. So let's just rename that and we'll call that color curves. So we know that it's a curves adjustment and it's dealing with the colors, and we'll rename this one tonal curves just to make our lives a little bit easier so we know what each one of these is actually doing to our image so let's come back up to this one change from the rgb or if you're working in cmyk the cmyk mode just by clicking on there and we can now choose the color channels to start influencing those so this isn't going to influence the tonal information this is influencing the color information so let's click on red for example we'll do the same thing again we'll just pin those points down so we make sure that we don't have any influence on the sort of upper mid tones the lower mid tones and the highlights we just want to influence the shadow area so if we start to pull this up we'll start to introduce some red into those shadows and you can see they start to warm up if we do the opposite we drag it this way you can see we start to bring in the opposite color in to the background so we start to add a little bit of cyan in there really can choose how exactly how you want to adjust this so we'll do exactly the same thing there we'll just tweak that get exactly where we want 
we've now added that color information in there and again we can do exactly the same thing we can come down to the color curves layer double click on it and we can now control exactly what's been affected so we make sure that we don't change those skin tones we just control the background information again alt or option to control the feather on there so that now is making sure that the skin tones are not being altered by our adjustment there only the shadow information is being adjusted now if you find your image starts to look a little flat at this point what you can easily do is just come down add an adjustment layer and we can come up and we can choose brightness and contrast and then what we can do is we can just bump a little bit of contrast back in there don't want to go crazy we still want to retain that sort of flatter look to it but add a bit of contrast into it so there's before there's after just darkens things down ever so slightly still retaining that lovely matte effect now, there's one final thing that I like to do when I'm working with this style of image is I like to desaturate things a little bit to give it that sort of retro suggestion of color. So we'll do exactly the same thing. We'll come down, new adjustment layer, and this time we're going to come up and choose hue saturation. And from there, we're just simply going to use the saturation slider to control the amount of color in the overall image. So we'll just bring that down ever so slightly. Don't want to go crazy with this. I still want that color, but I like the retro kind of crushed shadows, slightly desaturated look. I think it gives a really classic look. So there's before, there's after. Still has that nice color in there, but has a nice retro matte effect to it. And that's all there is to it. Because this is all done on adjustment layers, you can see we can easily enable or disable those. There's our starting point, nothing being changed on there. There's our tonal curves one, there's our color tonal curve alteration for the shadow area. There's our brightness and contrast to bring a bit of contrast back in. And then there's our slight desaturation, all completely non-destructive. We can go back and edit at any point. And that's all there is to it. So I hope you found this video useful. I hope it's given you insight into not only how you can create this effect, but also how you can use those blending modes and so on to really get some quite subtle alterations to the tonal information and the color in your images. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all of the new content we add every single week. If you have any comments, questions or feedback on this video or anything else covered on the channel, please pop those in the comment section below. And until next time, take care.